Well, like I said at the beginning of the service, it's Celebration Sunday, it's Compassion Sunday, it's Good Shepherd Sunday. This is the third week of Easter. Every year we get the 23rd Psalm and some reading from the 10th chapter of the Gospel of John. It's probably the second most preached on text of Scripture in all of the New Testament, rather than the story of Thomas, which we get week two, week one of Easter, after Easter. So we get the Good Shepherd this morning. And how many of you have ever done anything with sheep? I got a few hands. All right. So we have some people here that actually know about sheep. So you can correct me if I'm wrong on the stuff I'm going to tell you here in a few moments. Sheep are, um, I'm sure you've probably heard before, um, dumb animals. Do you feel good now that you've been referred to by Jesus as a sheep? But we're all in this together, right? We're all sheep. And we could go through the 23rd Psalm line by line. I actually have a wonderful book on my shelf. It's about 100 pages long, and it goes through the 23rd Psalm line by line. It's the 23rd Psalm from a shepherd's point of view. A shepherd actually talks about what the 23rd Psalm means and what it talks about and what it looks at. How the Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and lead me beside still water. If you know if the sheep has a choice, it will drink stagnant, muddy water rather than a moving stream. And in order for a sheep to be able to lie down, it has to be without any agitation whatsoever. It has to be completely calm and completely still. Which sounds pretty much easy, right? Except you have to remember um, bugs like little gnats and stuff that fly around in their faces, which is a little bit later there where it says, He anoints my head with oil. When the shepherd would douse their head with oil to keep bugs away, because if a sheep had bugs flying around it and up and in its nose, it would actually beat its head against a rock or a tree and kill it killed itself trying to get rid of bugs. The shepherd literally has to make the sheep lie down. The shepherd literally has to make them walk in the path that he wants them to walk in. They were all like lemmings, follow each other in the same dirty old path and drink the same dirty old water and do the same thing day after day after day. The shepherd wasn't there to show them to do all these things. Sheep are not the brightest crayons. But yet they do have one thing that they can do and that they do very well. The Gospel of John this morning tells us that they know me and I know them just as the Father knows me and, and, and I am known by the Father, right? They know my voice. My sheep know my voice, right? In Jesus' day, the shepherds would have gathered out in open fields and places and there would have been pens. And these pens basically would have been three sides with rocks on them with an opening going into it, like a valley, basically. And a little bit before this, in the, in the gospel, 10th chapter of the Gospel of John, it says, Jesus says, I am the gate. Right? People who come in the, the pen not through me are thieves and bandits and they're coming in to steal the sheep. But I am the gate. Because literally in Jesus' day when they would get these sheep into this pen this valley, with only one way in and one way out, the shepherd would lay down in the opening, or would sit in the opening, or would stand in the opening. He would be the, literally, the gate to keep anything out and anything from coming in. And not one shepherd would put his sheep in this pen because there'd be many shepherds out in the field, right? There might be multiple full flocks of sheep in this one gathered valley. So when a shepherd goes in to get his sheep, do you think that he can tell by looking at them which ones are his if they're all dirty and nasty? Maybe. I don't know. I'm not a shepherd, so I can't answer that question. But when he goes in, the shepherd would do his call, and who would come? His sheep. Not anybody else's sheep, but his sheep would come because they heard the call of the person that they know takes care of them. They know his voice. So one question for you this morning is, when your shepherd calls you, do you hear him? Do you listen? The interesting part to me today, notice we're not going to answer that question. That's for you to contemplate. 
The interesting part to me this morning for this text is the line that I paused on. I have other sheep that are not part of this fold, and they must come along too. And they will hear my voice and know my voice. You know what this tells me? It gives me a very clear picture that God's not done yet. Because there are other sheep that aren't here yet. God's not done yet. God is still calling people from all walks of life, from all places in the world. And I absolutely know that that's true because Jesus said this 2,000 years ago. And if God still wasn't calling people, none of us would be here today. Right? Because somehow, some way, we got the call and we heard the call of the shepherd and was brought into the fold. We were made part of the flock. We listened and heard God calling us and we followed. God is still calling people from all walks of life, from every place on the planet, to bring them in. If it were not true, you and I would not be here. Secondly, God is still working in and through every last one of us. Do you know that every one of us has a call to ministry? Did you know that? Not just me, I have a fancy piece of paper hanging on the wall in there, signed by Nelta, that says that I have a call. It's signed by Nelta and our interim bishop at that point in time, saying that y'all have called me here to be your pastor. But each and every one of you received a call. And you each, each and every one of you probably actually has, or did have at one point in time, a special piece of paper that tells you about that. We gave two of them out last week. It happens right here. When God names you and claims you as his own child and calls you into the fold, he's given you a call to go into the world to do something for him, to be a part of his mission and ministry, to be a part of his plan that no one else can fulfill. You have a call to share your love and life that God has given to you with everyone else around you. Now, does that mean you need to go out and talk about Jesus every day? No. You need to live your life in such a way that God shows forth through you. It's not us that lives, it's God that lives within us. It's the fact that they don't see me, right? The thing we say to the babies or the the adults when we baptize them, let your light so shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to God in heaven. That they may see the good things that you're doing in the world, not because you want the recognition yourself, but because God himself is getting the glory from the things that you're doing. And this fold is going to expand beyond all imagination. We can't even possibly imagine the people that are going to be brought into this fold by Jesus if we allow him to use us and work through us. The 20 kids we saw this morning up here, the 20 kids that have cards out there on that table, all of them are people that are going to be brought into this fold because of things that people here do. Can you imagine what's going to happen if we can simply open our lives up enough to God and allow Him to use us the way that He wants us to use us? To be His hands and feet in the world. To help Him in His mission that's not done yet. Because God is up to amazing and wonderful things. If we'll only listen for His voice and follow what He calls And allow Him to use us to show forth His great love and mercy to all this world. So listen as the shepherd calls you. And go out into that pasture to share His love with everybody. Because I know beyond the shadow of a doubt that God's not done yet.